This is an old defunct alarm panel, and these are old orphan sensors. One is useless, the other is good as gold. What to do, what to do. What if a device this small could fix a problem this big? Interested? Stay tuned. Hey, Smart Homers, John Stone, the DIY Smart Home Guy. Ever since I started my Smart Home journey, I've been looking for a way to wire in my existing hardwired door and window sensors into my Smart Home Hub. Well, the day has come. I stumbled across what might just be my favorite new Smart Home device, the Favaro Smart Implant. This thing is tiny. I was blown away by how small this thing is compared to all of the capabilities that are packed inside. But don't worry, this video isn't about this circuit. These first two wires are power and ground for the device. The next two wires can be used for either binary or analog sensors. We're going to use the binary sensors in today's project. The next three wires are for either one DHT22 digital temperature humidity probe or up to six DS18B20 sensors wired in parallel. I've not tested the temperature probe side, but that is a different video. And this little wire here, it's a Z-Wave antenna. On the other side of the smart implant are two controllable output ports. I'm not going to get into those here either since I have a DIY build coming soon and I don't want to spoil the surprise. I'm really excited. All right, John, back on task. Alarm system, let's get into it. Since the closet where my alarm panel is located is so small, we'll do most of the work here in my lab, but I'll be sure to show you the finished result. So here's how we're going to wire this in you'll need a power supply that operates between nine and 30 volts DC. I'm using this old 12 volt power supply for an old RGBW LED strip. There's a full list of components for this build over on my website and in the description below. I'm going to connect the power using this screwless DC power jack, then connect the negative side up to this terminal bar with the black terminal strap, and then the positive side up to the terminal bar with the red terminal strap. On the sensor side, one leg gets attached to the negative terminal strip. Since we have a bus bar, it doesn't really matter which one. The other leg of the sensor will get attached to the IN1 on the Fabaro Smart Implant. The red P wire will go to the red terminal strip that is now supplying 12 volts, and the blue ground wire will get attached to the black terminal strip that is acting as our ground. Let's hold off for a few minutes before we apply power. It's time to get this thing into the hub. But before we pair this with the hub, I want to point out that I have smart switches and a range extender that are very close to these little Fabaro units. In your case, you want to make sure that you have some powered Z-Wave Plus devices to make sure that you have a solid mesh network. So for you SmartThings users, I am using the drivers from Ovidio Prutenau. There's a link to the SmartThings thread and the devices in the description and over on my website. There's a total of six drivers that need to be installed. For you Hubitat users, I'm using the drivers from Christy999. There's a total of five in all, one main driver and four children. You'll want to get all of those installed first. In either case, you'll want to install the main smart implant driver first to avoid any errors. To show you how this gets set up in the hub, I'm going to do it off of this breadboard to make a couple of things easier to demonstrate. Let's get the power turned on. After you have those drivers installed, apply power to the smart implant you should see the red light turn on. On SmartThings, put the hub into pairing mode and then push this button three times. <laughs> you may need to press this fairly hard. When it comes in, you'll see a single device on the My Home page. Click that device. Now you'll see the capabilities of this device. Don't be fooled by the screen. Other than the temperature, none of this stuff really works. And we'll get into that in a minute. Then click on the setup gear. Set the parameter for input one to either normally open or normally closed alarm input, whichever matches your style of contact sensor that you're monitoring. Then press save. Now you might be thinking that you can test this contact sensor from this main page. Well, you can't. Changing the state of the contact does nothing here. Go back to the main page and then you can see the state changes from here on the Alarm 1 device. Or you can go into the device itself and watch it change there. Either way, you're all set. Now it's time to bring it into Hubitat. Apply power. 
push that button three times. And you're in. You'll see seven child devices. For our alarm panel project, we're only worried about the digital inputs, which is our magnetic read switch. Go into the main device page and set the parameters. On the parameters, I'm only going to worry about the operating modes for input one and input two, since I'm only using this for contact switch monitoring. Save the preferences, then press the configure button on the main device page. You can go over to the logs and watch the magic happen. Now over to the child device page for digital input one. To update the current state, activate the contact sensor. You might have to do this by opening and closing a door, and then you should be good to go. And through the contact sensor and the temp sensor onto a quick dashboard, check out how fast this little guy is. Here's how the entire setup looks in my old defunct alarm panel. The Barrow Smart implant costs about $40. Since the implant can handle up to two contact sensors, that's the IN1 and the IN2, that makes it about $20 per sensor without considering the cost of the terminal strips or the power supply if you needed to purchase those. I hope you have fun with this little gym. I know that I will. My next project with the Smart Implant is going to be all sorts of fun. Be sure to subscribe to see what that is all about. If you want more details on all of this, there's a link to my website where I give more detailed instructions. Leave a comment below for how you plan to use the Smart Implant. We'd love to hear about it. And if you get stuck along the way, come join the DIY Smart Home Guy Facebook group. Until next time, cheers.